Newsflash, Flesherton Advance, December the 8th, 1920 and 1. The lady is elected in South Grey. South Grey has the distinction of sending to the Dominion Parliament a lady member for the first time in the history of this wonderful Dominion. As the early returns came in, it was thought the lady candidate was going to have a tight squeeze. Oh, brother. But later returns gave her an overwhelming majority said to be over 2,000 votes. The lady, Agnes Campbell McPhail, wears skirts, but they do not appear to be much of an impediment when she takes the notion to run. Lady elected in South Grey. One hundred years ago, and a hundred years later, that landmark election which saw Agnes Cambus Campbell McPhail elected as the first female Canadian member of Parliament continues to reverberate throughout this nation. As many of you who are watching this afternoon already know, this special Agnes Campbell McPhail event was to occur outdoors on the 3rd of October. That event had to be cancelled due to inclement rainy weather. Today we are entering the world of virtual reality a world which has enabled us to broaden our audience base considerably. Good afternoon, my name is Terry Mokri. Along with the Friends of the South Grey Museum, we celebrate the installation of an artistic rendering of a commemorative quilt which has been installed at the South Grey Museum here in Flesherton. We also welcome guest panelists and guests not only from Grey County, but also folks from the Toronto area principally Leaside. In Leaside, she remains a local icon where celebrations honoring her, like ours in Gray County, also take place annually. We are especially delighted to welcome some of Agnes McPhail's descendants, grandchildren of Agnes's sister, Gertha, Paul Huston of London, Ontario, Annie Huston of Vancouver, British Columbia, and Marib Huston of Cargill, Ontario. We also welcome the grandchildren of Agnes's youngest sister, Lillian, Joan Burroughs of Owen Sound, Jennifer Reed of Durham, Beth Herbst of Listowell, Carrie Clunas Smith of Owen Sound, and Jocelyn Chandler of Calgary, along with Hugh Clunas of Harriston. Ladies and gentlemen, the parents of our first guest were both in service to Agnes McPhail. Her mother, Margaret, Nay Copeland was Aggie's girl, living with Agnes as a housekeeper and a caregiver for Agnes's mother. Her father, Jim Sinclair, met his future wife as he was chauffeuring Agnes to one of their picnics. Born and raised in Gray County, she at an early age developed a love of poetry, and in 2016, she was selected as the Gray Highlands Poet Laureate. In 2017, she edited this book, Grey with a Silver Lining. It is a tribute to Grey Highlands for Canada's 150. The book includes poetry, recollections, and stories all related to this part of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Sharon Sinclair. Hello everyone. It is such a pleasure to take part in this program for Agnes McPhail. You've probably all heard the expression, I would not be the person I am today were it not for the influence of such and such an individual. Well, with regard to Agnes McPhail and myself, I think that expression could quite literally apply. I would not be the person I am today were it not for the influence of Agnes McPhail. As some of you know, my parents worked for Agnes McPhail. My mother in the capacity of a live-in housekeeper and caregiver for Agnes's mother, and my father as a chauffeur who sometimes would take Agnes to political functions like picnics. 
And it was on one of these excursions that my father met my mother. They fell in love. And the rest is history for the Sinclair family. So it is with particular pleasure that I present this poem to you today as a tribute to Agnes MacPhail. And in recognition, really, of all the individuals in this area who 100 years ago trusted her enough to put her in a position where someday she would be recognized and designated as a woman of national historic significance. How amazing is that? So I offer you when Agnes spoke. When Agnes spoke, people listened, for her voice was commanding and true, and she used it to champion causes, to accomplish everything she could do, to improve conditions for farmers whose votes catapulted to fame, an inspiring soul from Gray County to a leading role on Canada's stage. When Agnes spoke, people listened as her voice rose upward and smashed those barriers to gender equality in society's ceiling of glass. Shards of the past that women today must remember with grateful applause for the lady from Gray, whose vision helped pave new inroads in Canada's laws. On the national stage, many battles were waged and her voice was not always heard but a change was discerned when colleagues soon learned that Agnes stayed true to her words. She wasn't afraid to have ripples made and with tenacity wouldn't let go of situations she saw that contained many flaws and she challenged the old status quo. The conditions in prisons were just one example of compassion for sites she deplored. No one could rehabilitate in such conditions of hate. And the squalor she could not ignore. In the League of Nations, she found a place for her passionate voice for peace. She recognized society's need for reform and defended all colors and creeds. And when hecklers berated her vision or when opposing issues were raised, her humor, blended with a knife-sharp wit, was a trademark approach she engaged. She speaks to us still from Parliament Hill, where her legacy continues to shine, in benefits we might take for granted, but her signature is clearly enshrined. Her achievements were many, as she paved the way for generations of women who all need to pay a debt of gratitude to Agnes MacPhail for lighting a pathway and blazing a trail. Yet over the years, her voice seems subdued in our rapidly changing world. But thanks to the efforts of people with vision, we're remembering our Gray County girl who rose to fame from a humble life without wealth or advantage beyond a pioneer family whose values and guidance shaped a character determined and strong. Thanks to many committees, now road signs exist and a cairn's been erected with credit to Donna Mann. And now this art installation from Holger's imagination. These have all helped Gray County expand the value that's placed on heritage, the awareness that Agnes MacPhail must stay in the forefront forever where all local heroes prevail. They give us hope and inspire us all to reach for the elusive star that guides our personal destiny and raises the excellence bar. Future students will know that generations ago, Agnes rose to the top like cream, <clears throat> thanks to farmers who trusted a woman's voice to speak for their hopes and their dreams. Her voice is now silent, but if she could speak from wherever her spirit now roams, perhaps she might say something like this to folks from her former home. 
I fought for your rights, so your personal plight would be less difficult than our ancestors knew. Please take up the cause and ensure that our laws protect all Canadians, not just a few. Speak for me now, as the years unfold, and use a voice that's commanding and true. Then people will listen and will know that you stand behind everything you choose to do. To give to mankind, regardless of creed, the chance for a better life, to possess all the means to fulfill all your dreams. For that was my one wish for you. Thank you, Agnes MacPhail. And thanks to each one of you for listening. Thank you very much, Sharon. That was inspirational, of course. And Sharon continues to share her love of poetry with each and every one of us. Agnes Campbell MacPhail was a leading force in the Federal House of Commons. From the House of Commons in Ottawa, we welcome our sitting Member of Parliament for the writing of Grey Bruce's own sound. Please welcome Alex Ruff. Hi, it's Alex Ruff, your Member of Parliament for Bruce Gray Owen Sound. I would like to congratulate the Friends of South Gray Museum, the Municipality of Gray Highlands, and local artist Holger Meyeran of Arts on 10 for the installation of the commemorative Agnes Quilt. This piece honors Agnes McPhail, 100 years since her first historic election in 1921, when she became the first Canadian woman to be elected to hear the House of Commons. I'm standing outside the chamber, and I'm actually standing beside the bust of Agnes McPhail, uh, which sits right outside the chamber, no more appropriate spot. Agnes McPhail made significant impacts on advancing the lives of rural Canadians and all Canadians, and I'm proud to come from the community that honours her. I'm wishing the community all the best, and I can't wait to see the quilt in person. Congratulations once again. Thank you very much, Alex. The bronze bust of Agnes, in, uh, in front of which Alex was standing, was commissioned and put uh, actually commissioned and done by Felix de Weldon. Now Alex is standing of course near the bust in the chamber which was home for 19 years for Agnes. It was also home and a place for great debating. Our next guest was first elected in 2011 and a good friend and a tireless representative for all of us and to all of us in Bruce Gray Owen Sound our member of provincial parliament, please welcome Bill Walker. Thank you very much, Terry. It's truly an honor to be part of today's dedication of the quilt in honor of Agnes McPhail. You know, an MPP, an MP, a uh, writer, a teacher, a farm advocate extraordinaire. It is just truly humbling and it's wonderful for you and the committee and the municipality to always do dedications like this to honor the memory and all of that she has done for our community. Like, like Alex, I'm very honored to carry on the tradition of being a parliamentarian from the great riding of Bruce Gray on Sound. And as I leave today, to head back to the legislature for tomorrow's session, I'll stop and take a look at that uh, quilt that is, has adorned the wall, show my reverence, dedicate myself to uh, the, the memory of what Agnes has stood for in Great County. And as all of us do, try to uphold the proud traditions, her spirit, and most of all, her public service to make Canada the best place in the world to live. Thank you so much, Agnes, and to all on the screen and who all listening, thanks so much for the privilege to be able to serve. Thank you very much, Bill. Bill served as the government Chief Government Whip. He's been a Minister of Government and Consumer Services. He's the, he was the Associate F uh, Minister of Energy and most recently we'd like to congratulate him as he serves as the Deputy Speaker and Chair of the Committee of the Whole House. Now we move on ladies and gentlemen here to offer his greetings and a note to, um, and a note to Beaver Valley related to Agnes McPhail's story is Rob Leverty. Good afternoon. 
I'm deeply honoured to bring greetings on behalf of the Ontario Historical Society to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the election of Agnes MacPhail. For those of you who do not know about us, the Ontario Historical Society was established by eight local historical societies 133 years ago. The York and Pioneer Historical Society, the Niagara Historical Society, the Lundy's Lane Historical who still exist. So we emerged from the grassroots. In 1899, the Legislative Assembly of Queen's Park passed very unique legislation that gave the Ontario Historical Society the power to incorporate not-for-profit organizations in the province of Ontario who want to preserve and promote Ontario's history. Um, so we're the only group in North America that has this power. And there's many groups in Gray County that we've incorporated. For example, in 1998, the Old Durham Road Pioneer Cemetery Association, uh, the Owen Sound Emancipation Festival, the Friends of the Morston Village, Herit Heritage Village in Owen Sound, all the other people. and uh, most recently, the Gray County Black Heritage Society. In 2013, we incorporated the Friends of the South Gray Museum. To defend the South Gray Museum and to promote its educational work. And so I'm here today to salute also their tremendous work over the last eight years, uh, their community service. I'm also uh, mm -hmm. been a resident of Gray County for uh, almost 50 years. I have a farm in the Beaver Valley. And so I want to relate to a very short story about uh, Agnes McPhail. Uh, my late uh friend and neighbor Herman McConnell came to the Beaver Valley in 1914 and he remembers as a young man attending many of uh, Agnes McPhail's uh, community events and election rallies. He particularly re told me about her events at the Epping Church and the Sligo Schoolhouse two side road south of Rockland and Herman would say that at those crossroads, in every direction, as far as you could see, the buggies, the horses and buggies would line up. They were just overwhelmed the people to come and greet as Agnes McPhail and, and attend her events. There were so many people around the school or the church, he remembers. People were leaning in uh, through the windows to listen to her. And it took so long for her to leave every event because she would, all the constituents, uh, the local residents and farmers would have so many questions uh, to ask Agnes. It took her a long time to get to her buggy and then eventually her car. You know, it was uh, March, took 19 years to defeat Agnes McPhail. It was March 26, 1940. And what defeated her, of course, was a Gray County blizzard, a terrible winter storm. Some would say, even Herman, that uh, we've been in a political deep freeze ever since. There's no one ever been emerged that had the grassroots uh, appeal, the uh, international and natural stature of Agnes McPhail. So the question, of course, is where's the next Agnes McPhail? Well, we can hope, only hope that we've been waiting 81 years. We can only hope that she'll appear soon. Congratulations, South Gray, uh, Friends of the South Gray Museum, uh, for organizing this event. We are deeply honored to join you in celebrating the 100th anniversary of Agnes's election. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Rob is currently the executive director of the Ontario Historical Society, and since 1973, he has been a landowner and a conservationist in the Beaver Valley locally. Rob continues to help preserve the stories which came before us. And now offering greetings from, the, from Gray County, we go live to our Gray County Warden, Selwyn Hicks. Welcome, Selwyn. Thank you, and uh, hello everyone. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of today's event. 
I'm proud to bring greetings on behalf of Gray County Council to everyone here today. Agnes McPhail has been referred to as the most important woman in public life that Canada produced in the 20th century. Wow. We're so proud of her rural Gray County roots and the path that she blazed. 100 years ago, Agnes McPhail made Canadian history, becoming the first Canadian woman to be elected to the House of Commons. I can't even imagine the courage it must have taken and the adversity that she must have faced. Agnes not only gave women a voice in politics, she opened the door for more to follow in her footsteps, inspiring generations after her. In Gray County, we don't just admire Agnes McPhail for her incredible accomplishment. We also admire her because she embodied so many of the qualities we hold dear. She was strong. She was passionate. She was resilient. She was courageous. She was witty. And she was determined. We see these traits today in our communities and in our young leaders. Just tell us we can't do something, then stand back and watch us do it. 100 years is a major milestone, and I thank the organizers of today's event for drawing attention to this important anniversary. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of honoring the wonderful Agnes McPhail. Thank you, Selwyn. Thank you very much. Selwyn was first elected as a councillor in Hanover in 2006. He was also he is the deputy mayor of Hanover right now. He is a lawyer with offices in Hanover and Walkerton, and we want to thank him for his continued good work at the county level. And now we go live to the township of township of Southgate and Deputy Mayor Brian Millen. Welcome, Brian. Thank you, Terry. It's a pleasure to be here, and uh, particularly as a representative of the township uh, where Agnes was born. Uh, the township of Southgate, which of course encompasses the original townships of Proton, Egremont, and the town of Dundalk. Agnes was born in, Pro in uh, Proton Township in 1890 on a farm, not uh, just the line south of me, as a matter of fact, not far away. Uh, there's a stone marker, as uh, someone uh, already indicated, on Gray Road 9, just west of Hopeville, at the front of the old McPhail farm. And uh, it's, it's, always, uh, it's always inspiring to see that marker when you drive past. Um, I know my, uh, my grandparents used to always talk about stories about Agnes stopping in. My, uh, my aunt is a genealogist, and she, uh, she alleges that we are somehow related to Agnes. My grandfather and Agnes are second cousins, so apparently that makes me, let's see, second cousins twice removed. I have no idea how that works. You'll have to Google that to figure it out, but anyway... Regardless of whether I'm related or not, I consider myself related because I'm from the same area as Agnes. I'm very proud of that. Agnes uh, is a uh, towering figure in, uh, in community lore here in this part of uh, Southeast Gray. Um, you know, she, was a, uh, she went to Stratford Normal School to become, become a teacher. And she taught in many of the uh, one-room schoolhouses throughout both Egremont and Proton Townships. And you know, I often wonder, perhaps, was it because uh, of her connection to her students that she realized that farmers in the area needed a, a strong spokesperson to uh, speak up for them so that they could uh, better their lot in life? And, uh, you know, thus inspired, perhaps, she, uh, she, uh, th that's what inspired her on her quest to uh, represent local people in the legislature and uh, I'm so thrilled to be here today. It's, it's indeed an honor, as some have said already, and uh, we are quite proud to be the hometown, uh, so to speak, of Agnes McPhail. So congratulations to the organizers of the event. Uh, it's, uh, it's been a great event so far, and I will, I'm sure it will continue to be. Um, so thank you very much, and everyone enjoy the rest of the program. Thanks, Brian. Brian is, of course, now a deputy warden for Gray County, and he served as the township mayor in uh, Southgate in, from the year, years 2010 to 2014. Brian's an agriculturalist, a farmer, and as we've just learned today, a distant cousin of Agnes McPhail. So thank you for being with us today, Brian. Now we go live to the municipality of West Gray, and please welcome Mayor Christine Robinson. 
Hello, everyone. It is an honor and a pleasure uh, to be speaking on the topic of Agnes Campbell McPhail becomes a federal candidate at the Durham Town Hall. I do want to thank wholeheartedly Jane Gibson for providing the research and the detailed chronological information that assisted me in preparing the information today. Uh, Jane, thank you very much for all your hard work. So here's some interesting background information leading up to the historical nomination. As a young girl, Agnes Campbell McVale was far more interested in politics, especially the concerns of farmers as she, as she was to the workings of a rural kitchen. She often listened as farmers congregated in the McPhail household to discuss the farming issues of the day. When teaching in school in Sharon, Ontario, Agnes became actively involved in the political platform of the United Farmers of Ontario, which was a growing political movement seeking better conditions for farmers at the time. Agnes Campbell McVail became a recognized speaker for the United Farmers of Ontario. She teaches school by day and makes political speeches by night. As early as 1920, the Durham Review, a local newspaper, reported that Agnes Campbell McVale would make the best federal representative in the coming 1920-21 rather federal election. This was a significant statement in the newspaper as this was the first time that women had been given the right to stand for a federal election and stand as a federal candidate. In June 1921, Agnes Campbell McVale resigns as a teacher in Sharon, Ontario and returns to Gray County and begins making speeches regarding the United Farmers of Ontario's platform about the need to address inequalities plaguing agricultural communities at farmer organization meetings and at women group meetings. Coverage of her speeches were regularly featured in area newspapers. The date was an important one, September, 20, uh, September 22, 1921. The location was Town Hall in Durham. The Durham Town Hall, Hall played an important role in the ultimate nomination of Agnes Campbell McVale. On September 22nd, 1921, the political convention of the United Farmers of Ontario Political Association for Southeast Gray to select a federal candidate took place at 1.30 p.m. at the Durham Town Hall. According to the Durham Review, a local newspaper, 150 delegates were present, present, all men, no women delegates. Despite having the right to be there, other women were there, but no female delegates. The hall was packed. Agnes Campbell McVale said that she would let her name stand for the sake of women who were there, who were present, but not delegates. And that the issue was much more than tariff alone. It was about democracy. She was later quoted as saying that the, candidac the candidacy was the greatest thrill of her life. According to the Flesherton Advance, another local newspaper, there were some 25 aspiring candidates president, uh, present and every one of them fell before the charms of the Lady of Grey. Miss McPhail has been pretty well heard throughout the riding during the past summer and is recognized as a whirlwind to talk. No doubt she inherits from her esteemed father, Mr. Dougal McVale, the auctioneer, and the gift possessed by her may lead her into Parliament, the first as she knows. Then the biggest interest and profiteers may look out. Not all applauded her selection, but she was determined and supported by the United Farmers of Ontario, and she refused to resign. The Durham Town Hall? is located on George Street in the town of the former town of Durham in the municipality of West Gray. The building is still standing and is used for community events. In closing, West Gray Council on April 6, 2021, put forward the, the following resolution, and I would like to read it in honor of Agnes Campbell McVail. This resolution was passed unanimously. Whereas the years 2021, 2020, 
and 2019 each represent significant centennial anniversaries. And whereas 2021 marks the 100th anniversary of the first federal election in which women were able to vote and run as candidates. And whereas 2021 also celebrates the 100th anniversary of Agnes McPhail being the first woman elected to the Canadian House of Commons representing Grey Southeast. And whereas 2020 marks the 100th anniversary of the first Ontario municipal election whereby women ran for elected office. And whereas 2019 marks the 100th anniversary of the Ontario legislature patching, passing legislation enabling women to run for elected office for the Ontario legislature as well as Ontario municipal councils. Now, therefore, be it resolved that West Gray Council acknowledge the importance of these dates. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Christine was first elected mayor of West Gray in 2018. She's a very strong supporter among her many, many accomplishments of long-term care, long care homes and, of course, long-term care assistance. She and Scott, and Scott run the Chris Scott Equestrian Farm just outside of Durham, where they specialize in raising miniature horses. We move on now, and we're now live in the municipality of Grey Highlands and with our current mayor, Mr. Paul McQueen. Welcome, Paul. Uh, good afternoon, Terry, and uh, thank you for a great job you're doing. Um, I'm so pleased to be here today to celebrate Agnes McPhail and to have the opportunity to speak about the ways I feel connected to her through her work with United Farmers of Ontario and her political career. Like Agnes McPhail, I am a local farmer actively involved with the Ontario Federation of Agriculture and believe in advocating for the needs of our local community. In November 1921, Agnes McPhail was first elected as the candidate for Southeast Grey United Farmers of Ontario to run under the banner named the Progressive Party in an upcoming uh, federal election. With the support of the UFO or United Farmers of Ontario, Agnes became the first female MP in Canadian history that year and was first re-elected re in 1925, 1926, and 1930, using a combination of her national political policy and her UFO platform. When Agnes addressed the electorate, she not only spoke for the local farming community, but she addressed real issues that Canadian men and women were facing. She was a strong voice for rural issues and championed, the, <clears throat> championed for causes that included seniors, pensions, and workers' rights. Along with successful pl uh, federal political career, Agnes was frequently uh, contributed to the news publications such as the Fletcher and Advance and the Markdale Standard, where she wrote about political news and matters of interest to the surrounding rural communities. Once again, using her position with UFO and United Farm Women of Ontario to advocate for farming community, for the farming community. In 1943, Miss Mc, McPhail was elected to the Legislative Assembly of Ontario and was the first woman sworn in as an MPP, where she continued her efforts to push for equal, equality for women and to advocate for rural communities. Agnes was once quoted as saying, most women think politics aren't ladylike. Well, I'm no lady, I'm a human being. Well, being a, pol a politician is never an easy job. It was especially challenging for the women in the early 1900s who had come from our small rural community. Her work with the local farmers and their support for her was vital part of her success for political career. I'm so proud to have so many things in common with Agnes McPhail, truly respect and appreciate her contributions to the farming communities to both federal and, and provincial policy er, politics. It's truly a pleasure to be here to celebrate one of our own local trailblazer heroes for being elected 100 years ago. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you, Terry, and all the organizers of this today's event and all the guests, and also a special shout out to Jane and Barry. Have a great day, and this is a great event, and uh, all the best for everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Paul is also a past Grey County warden. There are generations of McQueens in the business of agriculture in the east, e agriculture in the east part of Grey County, 
And Paul is, of course, passing on that torch to his sons. He's always an advocate for a better life in agricultural areas of Ontario and continues to do a wonderful job. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the artist who was selected by the Friends of South Grey Museum to create this artistic rendering of Agnes, the Agnes McPhail quilt, our own arts on 10 artist and designer, Mr. Holger Myram. On your screens, you'll be seeing images of the early stages of the quilt, the finished product, and of course, Holger with a quilt rendering. First of all, welcome Holger to this special commemorative event. And thank you for a wonderful job with the rendering. I have a few questions that we'd like to do in an interview form, if you don't mind. First of all, this is not the first time your subject matter has been Agnes Campbell McPhail. And as you can see, I'm wearing one of your original t-shirts that you put together for Agnes, and they're still popular and really beautiful. But what initially drew you to Agnes and what drew her to your attention? I think you have to unmute. Holger, you have to unmute. Okay, see, there you we hear are. Me we're good. Yep, we're good. See, see, I don't know the technology. This is, uh, this is, yeah, I'm an artist. I can't do things with my fingers and with my pain. But yeah, anyway, I'm unmuted. Well, Perfect. This is, listen, listen, I'm still two cans in a string. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, I like to go back to that, anyways. Please. So here, 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 uh, I am coming to Canada uh, in the 1980s from Germany and of course, I had to go to the Parliament building in Ottawa and walked by that bronze bust. And it was Agnes. Uh, Jennifer uh, was telling me that she's from, Jennifer, uh, from, from, from Flesherton, where I reside. So um, first thing, going home to Flesherton, I googled more about her and that's what I found. I was intrigued by her. Fantastic. Now listen, there are many people who would like to see your talents on display and your pieces of work. Where else, other than my t-shirt, might they see your work related to Agnes McPhail and to others? Well, you can come to Arts on 10 in Flesherton and what you'll see there, the original painting, which you, is, which you have on your t-shirt, is right behind me. I'll show it again. There you go. It's still, it's still there and it's still available and it's still for sale. Haha. Uh -huh. Okay. And um, the other thing is, you know, I started um, at Arts on 10 on the fence, uh, on the north fence of the gallery, um, a mural wall, which is called the Mad Wall, which stands for Make a Difference. So we are um, uh, uh, showing all kinds of people uh, from Canada and from the world, which um, came forward as wonderful people and were um, definitely uh, worthwhile being uh, painted and uh, displayed. So there is uh, Agnes on the wall. There you go. She got it. You got it. That's wonderful. You're showing it there. And of course, you know, with her famous quote, I want for myself what I want for other women, absolute equality and the, the guys in the back, they are all looking um, in, in disbelief, not very happy that a woman can say something wonderful like this. Uh, that's it. And of course, you can see a lot of those uh, McPhail images also on our Arts and Ten website and on uh, any social media re, um, uh, associated to Arts and Ten. Well, that's yeah. great. That's wonderful. Now, your re rendition of the Agnes quilt is readily available on the wall of the South Grey Museum, and it's full of vibrant and uplifting colors. It's now a permanent reminder of Agnes McPhail, the lady uh, from Grey. The question I have is, how long did it take from the conception stage to preparation and the final completed artwork? Harry, I get this question every week at least once in the gallery uh -huh. people asking me how long does it take you well there's not an answer for that all right because you start at some point you get a commission you get distracted you do some other work you're not going to work from nine to five and paint 
and then it's over in a week or in two weeks. It's just something which evolves over a long period. It probably took, I don't know when I started even, five, six months, but again, not nine days, uh, nine, nine hours a, a, a day. So to answer your question, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's an it, excellent it's answer. Done. because. We yeah, know all through the, history that the different artists throughout history, all the famous ones yeah, like yourself, have yeah. taken a long time to do some of those inspired works. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So Holger, thank you for this yeah. inspired and creative work, celebrating a true Canadian leader. And thank you for taking the time to speak to us today. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, the artist yes, responsible yes, for the rendering of the quilt, Mr. Holger Meyerum. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. After an extremely extensive process, the Friends of the South Gray Museum are proud to announce and to welcome the new curator of the South Gray Museum, Mr. Peter Whitehead. Peter, welcome to Flesherton and to the Gray Highlands. It's good to be home. Thank you for having me today. Uh, my name is indeed Peter Whitehead. I'm the new or curator of the South Gray Museum. And that falls under my position as Community Heritage Curator for the Municipality of Grey Highlands. I'm uh, honored to take part in today's talk and just wanted to speak briefly uh, about my role, uh, where I have just come from, how it's going to tie into storytelling here in the museum and moving forward. Uh, I just returned to uh, my home in Flesherton from a seven year role as Creative Director of the Walt Disney Hometown Museum in Marceline, Missouri. And I bring this up specifically because Walt Disney only spent five years of his life living in uh, Marceline, but he used that time in that community as a source of inspiration uh, over the course of his lifetime uh, in film, in television, and in his theme parks. And it really does go back to heart connections. Uh, what do you love about your community? How do you draw from your community? And uh, absolutely Agnes McPhail uh, would have found inspiration in uh, her community, in her home, and drawn on that inspiration uh, throughout her career in Ottawa. And now I think it's incredibly important for us to share that legacy, not only with this community, but with this municipality and this uh, province and this uh, country uh, to understand where that inspiration came from. And the South Gray Museum is absolutely proud to be the platform uh, to share that story of this uh, trailblazing politician. So over the next few months, as we reimagine our gallery stories and our gallery spaces inside uh, the museum where we're speaking right now with Agnes's uh, piano just over my shoulder, uh, we will be using Agnes McPhail as a cornerstone to teach uh, both young and old that there is absolutely um, merit and heart in fighting for what you believe in. Her strong voice in Ottawa inspired millions and inside this museum and outside this museum, we will continue to inspire through her voice in our community. So I'm so uh, happy to virtually meet everyone. I will be almost uh, assuredly reaching out to many of you to help share uh, unique stories like that in this incredible space. And uh, I'm so glad to be home. So thank you. Well, thank you, Peter. And we could tell from the voice and what you said that there's a lot of enthusiasm. And uh, we look forward to many years of collaborative efforts and success at the museum. Congratulations and welcome once again. Thank you. As I mentioned at the onset of this special Agnes McPhail event, the Friends of the South Gray Museum have been instrumental in ensuring the continued success of the museum. Through special speech speakers programs, to Agnes Campbell McPhail celebrations, to numerous Friends of the South Gray Museum events, they continue to help preserve our history for one and all. To help conclude our program, please welcome Mr. Barry Penhale. Thanks, Terry. As Terry has already mentioned, the Friends of the South Gray Museum made the difficult decision to cancel our outdoor event due to what I call Agnes McPhail-style weather. 
Many looking in know that weather likely cost McPhail at least one election, and it is on record that a dreadful winter storm prevailed on the day she was laid to rest in Priceville. Going virtual today, fortunately, allows us to include the many loyal supporters of Agnes in Toronto, particularly those in the Leaside area, where at one time MacPhail served as Provincial Member of Parliament in the riding of York East. <laughs> Agnes also had a home there and wrote an agricultural column for the Globe and Mail. We welcome all viewers wherever you may be. This may be your introduction to our much-valued MC, Terry Milkery, who has been closely associated with events initiated by the Friends of the South Gray Museum, a not-for-profit, volunteer-driven group who bring you today's program. We are year-round boosters of Agnes McPhail, and even under COVID conditions, we keep busy reminding the general public that this is the 100th anniversary year since the Lady from Grey was elected federally as the first woman member of Parliament. What an achievement and what a woman. The Friends is chaired by my wife, Jane Gibson, and active members are Steve and Catherine Planner, Elizabeth Norrington, and myself, Barry Penhale. We are most grateful for the relationship we enjoy with the South Gray Museum Board, chaired by Colleen Bohr. Board members are Lynn Silverton, Peter Ryan, Stuart Halliday, Hannah Bowles, and yours truly. We, the Friends, appreciated receiving a grant in support of the quilt project and thank the municipality of Gray Highlands for same. Further thanks go to our Gray Highlands Mayor, Paul McQueen, Deputy Mayor, Atash Desai, and Councillors, Paul Allen, Kathy Little, Tom Allwood, Dane Nielsen, and Daniel Valdekit. As we continue to spread word of a local Scottish-Canadian girl, Agnes Campbell MacPhail, who went on to become a political legend. Our further appreciation is due to our former museum curator, Robert Yantorno, who over the past three years became a staunch Agnes McPhail enthusiast. And the friends now warmly welcome our new curator, Peter Whitehead, and very much look forward to working with him. And none of this would be possible without Tim Riley, our Mr. Technology. We are grateful to you, as always, Tim, and greatly appreciate the facilities provided by Leaking Ambiance Studio in Flasherton. In this big year for Aggie, as she is often affectionately recalled, we, the friends, are moving ahead with preparation, leading to an ambitious virtual program, a tribute to Agnes McPhail, to be streamed later this year. Do watch for details to be posted shortly on the Friends website. But let's now close by turning to Terry Mokri. Uh, thank you much, very much, Barry. And congratulations once again to the Friends of the South Gray Museum for all the efforts, not only related to Agnes Campbell McPhail, especially for that, but also for all the work they do, the hard work they do to support the South Gray Museum. Ladies and gentlemen, well, I guess all good things must come to an end, and I have an unpaid political announcement. This webinar will be available in the future, sometime, on the Friends of the South Gray, Southeast Gray Museum website, so check the site for further details. Right now, we would like to thank all of you for taking the time to celebrate this new chapter in the Agnes Campbell McPhail story. A special thanks to all of our guests and presenters who helped by sharing Agnes McPhail highlights. Thanks to our resident Flesherton artist, Holger Myram. And finally, to all who share a passion for yesterday's history and tomorrow's future. Thank you and goodbye and Godspeed to one and all. Good afternoon. <laughs>